pleased. Uh, a year ago today, she played her last game in Bosnia. Uh, we've, we've unfortunately not had her uh, with us. Uh, we could have took her to She Believes, uh, but we, we put her on a... And we spoke to Reddy and we spoke to Jade. We, we, we put her on a real good programme. And, uh, and tonight she showed everything that I wanted to see. Uh, great character around the place. She's a leader. Uh, you talk about a senior player that, that doesn't take no prisoners in it, on and off the field and uh, and doesn't really like uh, any of the razzmatazz that goes with, with what's happening around us at the moment and just gets on with the job and, and that's what I admire about her the most. She's, she's a simple player, simple person, humble person and someone that we, uh, we are absolutely delighted to have back. You wanted to stay quite switched on against a team like Spain. Sorry. You wanted to stay quite switched on yeah. against a team like Spain. How much of that? How much of that was a test, not just physically but mentally for the team? Yeah, well, it, it was. Uh, I made two substitutions just after half time because I, w I wanted us to suffer. I wanted the team to suffer. I wanted to see what we were like with the. You know, with them charging at us because I knew I knew that the subs would break the rhythm of our team, but I wanted to see. You know how our back forward cope, how our goalkeeper would show uh, up in that stage, how our midfield players would dig in and not just think we're going to have the ball because that's what we've probably worked on for the last 14 months. For us to do well at World Cup, there'll be games when we're going to have to dig in and block shots. There was a block shot by Kira Walsh in the last minute. That's what I wanted to see. Uh, and I just said I thought they could have done it better because the next step is to dig in but show composure as well. I thought we, we slashed at things too much. Uh, we, we just booted things clear. Uh, which I didn't want, but actually the scenario that we'd planned actually happened. Spain, Spain got us on the run. We, they were playing in pockets, and and my players were stretched, and it was quite fun watching them uh, stretched and out the comfort zone and, and shattered and running from side to side. Uh, you know, so it was it was a really good workout that went exactly uh, how I wanted it to. You know, at the start of the game, Phil, you said that Spain had been chosen. Yeah. For tactical reasons with the nine on the Japan game yeah. in the group stages. Um, did you see what you wanted to see and what things that you learned? From Spain? Uh, well, from, in terms of the way your side yeah. reacted to Spain? Well, th for the first 12 minutes, I don't think we touched the ball uh, because I think we just thought, oh, we'll just come out here and enjoy Spain passing the ball. And then all of a sudden, <coughs> rightly or wrongly, Jill, Jill Scott makes a tackle, yellow card, and all of a sudden the game changed, the momentum of the game changed. All of a sudden, everybody went on the front foot uh, and they lost the shackles. And I started to enjoy watching us play, and, and, and my players at half time, they came in and they sort of like said, Come on, let's get on the front foot. I thought it was a 3 4 0 game at half time. Uh, we came out in the second half, we got the second goal. Uh, and like I said, I then, I then made the substitutions, <clears throat> which meant it was never going to be a 3 4 0 game. But I think if we'd have had kept the same team, or, you know, uh, we'd, we'd have probably won that at, at Camter really in the second half because they'd gone, they'd gone at 2-0, they'd gone I made the substitutions, that gave them a little bit of, of impetus and confidence we, we, we broke our rhythm and it became, a, it became a boxing match then where they just kept punching us and punching us but we didn't go down One change you made at half time with the goalkeepers yeah. I wonder how far, if at all, those, those two displays in goal have gone towards you knowing who your three keepers are in the summer <laughs> Uh, well, I thought Ellie was brilliant. I thought Mary was brilliant. Mary showed her experience in the second half. Didn't panic in any situation. And Ellie, Ellie, uh, just got great composure. You know, it was all day. I kept saying to her, you "Okay," and it just it was like an under 15s game for today. Uh, we're lucky that we've got great keepers in the pathway. Uh, you know, Sandy McGuire played today for the 21s. Sophie Bagley's played for the 21s this week. Uh, we're actually blessed with brilliant goalkeepers, particularly in that younger age group. And, and we saw that KB the other day, I thought, produced a world class performance. So, you know, some of you is right that we've got a goalkeeping problem. I think, I think the only problem we've got is who to take rather than the problem of the quality. So, uh, I was pleased with them all. Obviously, since you've come in, you've mm. kind of brought in a possession based style, or at least more than what maybe the Lionesses have played under previous management. How pleased were you, particularly in the actual goals, to see that that really came across and they were they were really beautiful goals? They were beautiful goals, you're right, Molly. Uh, write that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, do, do you know, you, you get moments. Against Canada, uh, we, we, we didn't take the moments. If you think about the Canada game, uh, 
Tony Duggan could have slipped somebody and uh, Karen Carney had a shot from the, from just outside the box. We didn't take our moments against Canada where today we'd worked for the last three days about that composure in the final third. The pass from Duggan into uh, to White, then the, the cross field pass from White into Mead, the pass from Jill Scott. You know, we got into wide areas where the other day, say Rachel would have put the ball in the box, she played it square and we played our way into the box. So uh, that was pleasing. I, I've got to say, and I don't, I don't single, I thought Jill Scott was unbelievable. I thought, I thought she was unbelievable from start to finish. In training yesterday, she was sensational. Uh, first time she's ever captained the team today. Uh, was it 134 caps it was. So we, we, we made a presentation to her before the game because what Jill's the type of person that you can take for granted. She comes in, she bounces around, she keeps everybody happy, she goes for coffee, she comes back with 20 coffees for everyone. And, and people just think Jill's okay. And I've got to say, over the last 14 months, there's been probably, I've not probably given her enough credit uh, because I just think Jill's going to be there. Jill's always going to be there. She never lets us down. And and tonight, I thought giving her the captaincy and presenting it to her in front of all the girls was 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 special moment for her. And, and 134 caps, I think she's got. She still she still enjoys every moment of football, and uh, and she's vital to us. Obviously, there were some players missing today, like the likes of Steph and Lucy. And yeah. Obviously, the, some of the players that came in, you, you take your Beth Meads and Ellen White, obviously, with yeah. Jodie playing against Canada. They're really impressed. Does that give you even more of a headache coming up to find your starting eleven with the World Cup coming up? I, I wanted them to play well. I, I wanted them to play well, and, and Beth did. I think I think Beth's... Beth's turned a bit of a corner in terms of the consistency in her play. I think I think the goals that she believes was a, was a good one. Uh, the two goals in she believes was a good one, and uh, she's she's the I say the nicest, sweetest girl that you've ever met, and she scored the goal against Brazil. The the game after against USA, I got her in and told her she wasn't playing against USA, and the look that she gave me, she could have killed me, and and it's the first time that she's ever got angry. And when I talked about, you know, and she turned the corner that moment, she turned the corner from being nice Beth Mead to being hungry Beth Mead. And, and what we're seeing now for, for Arsenal and for England, we're seeing someone that's, I think, challenging to be a starter uh, and producing moments, producing goals. She's a goal threat. You look at the goals, Japan, Brazil, today, what's that, three and, three and four games? Not three and five games, maybe. Uh, that, that for a winger is, is, is brilliant. Last one, please. Tell what you've said. This is probably going to be the last game before you announce the squad for the yeah. World Cup. How difficult is it? I mean, everyone's played in this game. <coughs> yeah. And a lot of players have played well. Yeah. How difficult is it going to be now to, to say to three or four players that you know, they're going to get caught? Uh, it's going to be difficult. You know it. Yeah. I know it. It's coming. <laughs> uh, I know I'm going to do it. Uh, I know when I'm going to do it. I just don't know who's going to be. <laughs> so, and that is that is testament to them. Uh, we didn't really review the game in in the dressing room after the game. I, I, what I did review, I reviewed the last fourteen months from from us meeting up in she believes and and standing on that touchline, thinking, what's going to happen here? Didn't know. I've got to be honest. I was you set a team up to play a certain style, but you you don't know how they're going to adapt. Uh, and I thank them for what they've done for the last fourteen months and the efforts and. Uh, I think the pleasing thing for me is, as a coach, uh, is that I've stuck to what I believe in, and that is giving everybody an opportunity. Tonight wasn't a trial at all. Players didn't put themselves on the plane or, or took themselves off the plane. Every single one of them have, have made impacts along the way, uh, and telling not just the probably two or three players in this squad, but the four or five players outside the squad that they're not going to be in, is it, is going to be. It's happened to me three times, so I'm probably the best person in the world to to experience it. To understand how you do it, and uh, and and we spoke to the players about it, about how we're going to do it, what's going to happen, and ultimately now's the time for me probably to be ruthless and and take to put the uh, the best players on that plane, and they've got four weeks now to stay fit, to keep in form, and to keep keep charging forward because the the train doesn't stop now. So I've said to them, we go back to your clubs and you know if you're used to doing ten reps, I want I want them to do fourteen now. Because it's it's even though it's April, the clops have gone forward. It's not time to start putting your flip flops on. It's time to uh, to charge forward. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Thank Thank you. You.